Hi, welcome to my course. This is an IB Physics SL course that we're going to be uh, going through together. So my name is Mitch Campbell. I'm Canadian. I've been a teacher for many years, uh, just over 10 years now. Um, I've been mainly teaching math and physics, and I've been teaching the IB for a number of years now. Um, most recently, I've been teaching at Copenhagen International School. Uh, that's in Denmark. So although I'm Canadian, uh, I am married, and I'm married to a lovely Danish girl, so that's why uh, I'm living here in Denmark, where uh, I'm recording this right now. Now, why is it that I decided to start this uh, online revision course? Well, I've actually been teaching at some other revision courses for IB students in the past. So I used to teach at some at Oxford uh, University, and then I decided to start my own in Copenhagen, uh, just outside of Copenhagen, actually. But uh, this is our third year now that we run a course during the Easter break. So uh, at least in Europe and North America, during Easter time is a good time uh, for students to do some revision. Also because they have a week off from school, normally. So um, in these courses, what we do is we try to help students to review and prepare for their exams. Now, when I was doing these courses, uh, the one here that we host in Denmark, uh, we have a maximum class size of only 10 students. So that means that, well, not everyone can actually attend our course. And um, it happened a few times where some of our students have actually moved away. And so they've asked, you know, hey, do you offer an online course? And last year and the year before, I was like, no, sorry. And then I just thought, why not offer one? So that's what this is right now. This is why I'm here. So I've decided to start an online revision course to help you to prepare for your exams. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be in your last year of your exams. You might be uh, last year of your IB, I mean. You could be in the first year of the IB diploma course. So let's maybe talk a little bit about the course itself. So this is going to be meant and tailored to students taking the IB Physics Standard Level course. Now, if you're taking the higher level, these are, of course, uh, good for you as well, because higher level students have to learn all these topics. They just have to do some extra ones. So we're going to be going over uh, some of the core topics here. Now, before going any further, um, I do want to say that the Physics SL course, which is equivalent to the last two years of high school, it lasts two years. So can we do everything in a one week course? No way. So that's what this online revision course here is meant to cover some things. It doesn't cover everything. There's no way to cover a two year course in only one week. So what I will, however, be doing, and you'll be surprised by how much we can actually go over in a one week course, uh, we'll be going over what I think are the key things from each of these topics, as well as what uh, you know, might be the sneakiest or trickiest things for students. So uh, topic one then, uh, physics and physical measurement. Uh, that one I'm going to be doing throughout the other ones. So this one talks about vectors and scalars and how to do uncertainties and accuracy and precision, those types of things we will be talking about. Mechanics. It's such a short little word and yet it's such a big topic. This is sort of the basic physics. So this involves things like forces, Newton's laws, uh, energy work, power. So uh, we're going to be looking at things like kinematics, which means something is sort of launched somewhere or, or maybe dropped from something. Uh, so there we can figure out lots of stuff there. The main key thing with uh, mechanics, at least, uh, as far as uh, the kinematics part, will be all about acceleration and it, are things accelerating or not. So we'll be covering some stuff from that. Topic three, thermal physics, is actually, in my opinion, a fairly short, compact topic. We'll be covering things like the main key definitions that you should not even think about coming to your exam uh, without knowing these definitions. So things like heat and uh, internal energy and temperature. We're also going to look at things like um, specific heat capacity and latent heat, which is involving uh, phase changes. So those are the things we're going to cover within thermal. Then number four, oscillations and waves. Uh, when they started the new syllabus, which started in, uh, well, first exams were in 2009, they added something to it called SHM, Simple Harmonic Motion. In the past, it used to be in the curriculum, then they took it out, and then they've added it again. Now, when we talk about oscillations and waves, though, and simple harmonic motion, the equations may look totally crazy, and yet there's not actually that much to it. And hopefully, by the time I'm done with you, uh, you'll find the same thing. 
because they certainly look daunting. Those equations certainly look difficult when you first uh, look at them. We'll also go over things like um, waves and uh, things like the wavelength and the frequency and period. Uh, so we'll be talking about some of those things. Uh, then a number five is electric currents. That's all about circuits. So we'll talk about some tricks about how to read and understand circuit diagrams. I've got some neat examples, at least that I've always used with my students. Uh, things like using chocolate uh, to help to understand circuits and voltage and uh, current and resistance. So we'll be going over some neat things there. Number six, fields and forces. This is all about gravitational, magnetic, and uh, electric fields and uh, gravitational, magnetic, and electric forces as well. We'll be talking about how to draw these um, field lines as well as how to deal with them and how to understand uh, what to do when we see certain types of situations. I've got some neat little tricks there too to show you about these hand rules that you use for magnetism. Number seven is atomic and nuclear physics. There we're going to talk about things like the atom, uh, no surprise there, as well as the nucleus of the atom and how to actually deal with things like uh, radioactive decay. So we'll be talking about alpha and beta and gamma decay, for example. Uh, number eight, energy, power and climate change. It's a big unit and a lot of it's just about reading and remembering a few facts. So I'm going to show you the main things that you should be covering there. There we talk about things like global warming and things like um, albedo and uh, things like wind energy and wave energy, solar energy, nuclear power, things like that are going to be covered there. So if a student takes the physics SL course, the standard level, you must learn these core topics. But in addition, you also cover some optional topics. Now students are supposed to do two of the optional topics. There's a bunch of them. But the ones that we're going to be covering, or at least the ones that I've done videos for, are uh, these three here. So you're supposed to do two optional topics, and I've shown you three of them just to help you out a little bit. So uh, A is sight and wave phenomena. That's one that's also an HL subject. So this one here is taught for all the HL students, but it's also an option for the standard levels. So is B, which is quantum and nuclear physics. So in uh, sight and wave phenomena there we talk a bit more about diffraction and about uh, standing waves. With the quantum one we talk about things like the wave particle duality and photoelectric effect. Some neat things like the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Um, and we talk about nuclear physics as well. We expand a little bit on what we've done in topic 7 uh, in the core. And the other uh, option that I've done is uh, astrophysics. So that one talks about, uh, well, things about going uh, up in the stars. So things like how stars work. Uh, we can talk about things like the expansion of the universe and the Big Bang theory. Not just a show, but also uh, an actual theory. And so these are the three options that uh, I've done videos for. Now for a student taking the IB Physics SL, they have exams in May or November of their second year of study. Now the exams are worth 76% of your grade. The other 24%, uh, that's taken up with your labs. So things like um, you might have done design labs or data collection and processing labs or conclusion and evaluation labs. So those cover the other 24%, but this 76%, those are your actual exams. And that may seem a bit daunting because you might think, oh God, a lot rides on this. And sure it does. But there's no sense getting too panicked about it. So I'm going to hopefully uh, explain some of this stuff in a way that will make the exams easier. Now I do cringe a little bit uh, at the thought of you know, students only studying for the exam. I think that's a little bit um, uh, misguided or maybe a little bit limited. So I hope that you have been learning this stuff uh, as you've gone along. Um, and speaking with your teacher and asking questions and reading a textbook. So this right here is not meant to take away from teaching, not at all. You still have to do a lot of the work yourself. And I'm just here to help you to understand a few of these things. So um, as far as the exam goes, just to make sure you're clear, there are three papers or three different exams that a SL student takes, either in May or November, depending on where you live. Uh, so if you do your exams, paper one, it's multiple choice. There's actually 30 multiple choice questions. It covers the core topics, so those are those eight. And you are not allowed a calculator for it. 
but you are allowed a data booklet, in other words, all the equations. Now paper two is a longer answer, and it still covers the core. You are allowed a calculator for that one, and you are still allowed a data booklet. And paper three is longer answer, covers the two optional topics, and you are allowed a calculator for that, and it still does uh, allow the data booklet. So as we go along, I hope that you'll follow along with your data booklet, and if you don't already have one, find it, ask your teacher for it, print it out, and that way you can follow along with the equations that we look at. So what does this course here actually entail? Well, we're going to be doing a number of uh, hours uh, here together in this classroom, uh, going over these main topics as well as these three options. So that's going to be one thing. But another thing that we're going to cover is um, a little bit about how to use your calculator, so some tips and tricks on how to do that. I'll be showing you that in a different format with a screen capture program as well as some videos showing you how to use your data booklet best, so what every equation means and how to do it. So I'm hoping that uh, this online uh, revision course here is going to help you not only to prepare for your exams, but maybe also just to explain a few of these things in a different way. Maybe I'm going to explain it in a different way than your teacher did, and that's great. Sometimes it just helps to hear it a second or third or fourth way. Sometimes that's a good thing. So welcome to the course, and I hope you're going to enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making these videos.